Hi there, I'm Rebecca Weaver, and for my final project, I chose to do spirituality and hunting for the Alaska Athabascan natives. Now, as far as hunting is concerned for the Alaska native Athabascans, they believed that the animals chose to sacrifice themselves for the continuation of the community. With this, they also believed that appropriate rituals, procedures, and a mindset were followed in the hunting and harvesting of these animals. And if they did not follow these particular procedures and rituals, it was believed that the animals could choose not to sacrifice themselves, as the animals were not just like people, but were actually people that um, and had that same level of uh, significance. So as long as there were there was no overhunting and there was respectful harvesting, then these animal sacrifices would continue. The native peoples, they used all parts of the animal that they could and any of the parts that needed to be disposed of, they had rituals for those parts as well. So in this presentation we're going to examine some of these rituals and we're also going to look at how anthropologists recorded um, these attitudes and mindset of the Alaska natives and they did so with a superiority of the Western culture's world viewpoint. And you can see that the return of the salmon, while it might have biological aspects, also has a spiritual aspect, and it's that spiritual aspect that the anthropologists tended to dismiss. The worldview of the Alaska Athabasca natives consisted of a human body and um, the human spirit or soul of ancestor spirits, animal and plant spirits, there were spirits of place and power, and there was also a universal essence uh, for these Alaska Athabascans. And there was an intermingling of spirituality and survival traditions, and these deeply adhered to practices, they provided successful results, and these Alaska Athabascans were thriving, that is, until the arrival of the Europeans. So we'll look at what those rituals were and their attitudes. Here we have uh, a young boy and he, uh, he has just caught a grouse, it looks like, and Denali Whiting of Kotzebue says, always give your first catch to an elder, respect the land and the animals, and harvest only what you need to be sure to take care of what you harvest. In an informational flyer put out by the uh, United States government, we have uh, Gladys Evanoff of the Denali, uh, Denina, sorry, Denina culture, saying, respect the land and respect the water. The land, it's like part of us. You need to treat it right. You don't just kill animals. You only kill what you need and show your respect. You don't even tease a moose. We have a lot of stories about that. Kids teased a moose and all the game went away. It's all about respect. Thousands of caribou used to come here. They stopped because people mistreated them. Animals, you have to take care of them. If you don't treat them right, they will go away from you. They give themselves to you willingly, but they watch. They watch how they are treated, and if you don't treat them right, they will go. This captures the essence of what the Denina believe about the animals. Not only do you need to treat them right, but you also need to think about them correctly because the Denina also believe that the animals can sense your thoughts, they sense your attitudes. So not only do you need to do it in public, you also need to do it in private, inside the privacy of your own mind. Here we have uh, salmon on uh, along the Kijik River. We have some uh, salmon spawning. Um, here's a quote by a Denina elder uh, remembering what it was like with the dog teams. They use dogs a lot in their hunting, their traveling, 
and um, and for companionship. They treated dogs very respectfully. They made sure to give dogs plenty of food and they um, one of the things that they would never eat was a dog even if they were starving. Harvesting of salmon that come up um, the Kijik River Athabascans divided their folklore into three time periods. One was the time when animals could talk. Second was the time of the campfire people. This was the time of the when the Denina came. And the third was the time after the coming of the Europeans. The Denina believed that animal bones needed to be returned to the water and uh, those those bones that where the animals came from the water and that the land animal bones needed to be burned in a hearth. This allowed these animals to be reincarnated or put their clothes on again was their phrasing for that. So respectful harvesting sent the animal spirit to reincarnate back to an animal and return back to the ecological system. The cold storage of salmon enabled these Alaska Athabascans to create more permanent residences. With this they had the first salmon ceremony where they laid fresh grass out in the front of houses for the um, to harvest these salmon. They would sit in sweat sweat baths and they would put on their best clothes and decorations and after cleaning and cooking the salmon they would gather on the grass and eat communally and make sure that the entrails were returned to the water. The reason they did this has to do with a story about a, a rich man having a daughter. She disobeyed her father when he told her not to go near a fish trap. And once that, once she was at that fish trap, she began talking to a king salmon. She eventually transformed into a fish and went into the water. Well, she was never found again. But the next year, a little boy showed up at the fish trap where there once, and this he was a little king salmon. And the rich man saw the familial resemblance, and he had been talking to the little boy, realized it was his grandson. The grandson gave him instructions on how to dry salmon, and he told the rich man that if these instructions were followed, the king's salmon would continue to return. So that is the process that they used and the story that they told for that. Peter Kalifornsky also he is a Denina elder. He recalled a story passing down through these traditions of a young man that didn't believe in the respectful treatment of animal bones. And he used to butcher the animals, scatter the bones with total disregard in places where people would walk. But because of this disrespect and mistreatment of the bones, he was haunted by bad fortune. One night he dreams that he is visited by the mother of all animals, and she chastises him for his bad behavior and she shows him that animals cannot be reincarnated properly and they're horribly disfigured by his actions. She then shows him the animals that have had the proper disposal techniques to, administered to their remains, you know, and these animals, they're reincarnated healthy and back to human land. So the young man goes back to the village. He's so ashamed and he confesses of his actions. It's these types of stories that guide the youth as they're growing up to really want to do what's right. And we were talking about dogs earlier and how dogs were used. Uh, dogs were particularly important in the hunting of bear and caribou and they would sniff out the bear holes and they would uh, help in transmitting all of the game back to the camp. Here we see a picture of Denina people and their abundant harvest. Next, just more pictures of Denina people and harvesting their salmon. Once again, this was a uh, family activity with everyone working hard for the good of the community. Here we see Karen Evanoff teaching her son how to process fish at a Denina fish camp, uh, trying to revitalize and bring back these old 
traditional skills and ways of life and the attitudes that go along with it. Once again, working together in fam familial groups, uh, showing the younger generation how that this should be done. Drying of salmon, and here we have salmon drying on fish racks. Beautiful salmon, their, their life really revolved around the salmon. Here we see Helen and Wayne Dick making um, fish traps and that would be used in the rivers, traditional fish traps. Here we're seeing uh, elders teaching and passing on to students the traditional ideals and giving meaning to these procedures and utilizing this cross-generational learning. Respect giving to the animal sacrifice. We can see that by um, watching this young girl kneeling at the moose that she's just killed. And here we see um, the family group that uh, has just killed a moose. Uh, Denina elders having killed a bear. Uh, the Denina used all parts of the animal. Porcupine were especially important. There he is, cute little sucker. And they would use those in the quills. They would even use in their decorations and beading. Lastly, I want to uh, bring home the fact that respect was one of the major attitudes of the Denina people. My grandparents said the game and animals will be alive and good. It's just the people that are going to have to show them respect and let them know don't kill too much so there'll be more for later. Learn to live off the land and learn to kill what you eat only and teach our kids how to hunt and skin and live off the land because if you don't teach them that and you get old there's nobody going to be around to provide for you. And that is Denine Elder Clarence Del Ketty. And I think that's fitting to end this on. Thank you guys very much for listening to this presentation.